Welcome back, everybody, to C++ Library Tutorial. My name is Matt, and uh, this is episode three. In this episode, I'm going to talk about cross-platform compiling, because I did say that that's what this was, cross-platform library, at the beginning. But we've only compiled on Windows with this Visual Studio tool, so anyone can follow along with that, because it's a free tool and it gets you everything you need. But what if you're using a Mac? What if you're using Linux? What would you do? Well, I want to show you that you take this exact same code and you just compile it over there. Sometimes there is platform specific code and that's what we're going to get into. We're going to get into platform specific code and what you need to think about and what you need to do. But right now where we left off, I did a few updates to one of the tests. I think I just fixed something that should have been food two on the second one. So it was uh, given a false flag, but that's uh, already there. I'll go ahead and push it, I guess. But that'll be like a prefix before the episode essentially. Okay, well, as this is right now, if we go look at the code, let's go to our solution explorer, look at our source, look at our look at our thing. We don't really see any specific Windows stuff here um, in these headers. It's all generic, we'll say. Uh, no Windows specific stuff here. So as this is right now, with no changes needed, this should work on any OS. It should. We're using CMake. Now that's one of the great things about CMake, um, is this cross-platform. Uh, it's kind of like a front end to your build system that's crops platform is essentially one of the main points of it uh, for example you know visual studio by default it's going to want you to make a visual studio project and if you do that you get a visual studio compiling thing and that's only going to work on windows they might I, I don't know about mac and stuff they might have i don't know what visual studio support on mac is these days uh, so i have no idea if you can open a Visual Studio project there, but I'm pretty sure you can't on Linux at all. So you would have to convert it to something where you'd have to manually come up with compiling commands. And it's basically a real pain if you try to go from like Visual Studio project and then cross-platform. And that's why we started with CMake, this cross-platform. Now, um, I think the next thing to do here is basically to compile this on Linux. Now, all right. So over to Linux we go. We're going to use, I think, WSL. Now, I guess I'll briefly talk about this. I probably have some videos on my channel, but I think they're a bit dated. There are ways to get the Linux OS on your machine. Sure, you can do the classic virtual machine. Those are kind of slow and clunky. There are better ways these days, um, in my opinion. WSL, Windows Subsystem on Linux, is supported by Windows, and you can run a lot of Linux distros, so you can test your compiling that, that way. Uh, there's also SIGWIN. Um, which I've done videos on, basically gets you a Linux console. There's just a lot of ways to get a Linux-like environment on Windows is the point. But we're going to use WSL because it's the officially supported one. I'm not going to go over the install of that. I do have videos on it, but it's pretty straightforward and open. All right, so I've got a Windows PowerShell up. I've already installed WSL. All right, so we're in Ubuntu here. I can do a print working directory. See where we're at? We're at my home. Um, I can go CD into my source directory. I already know I have one. Let's see what we got here. Then I should be able to pull uh, this this uh, public repo that we're working on here because I don't have it in my source right now. So if we want to pull it, we can just go git clone uh, https github.com slash code tech and tutorials slash nutrition. And if I've spelled that all correctly, we got it. There we go. Spelled it all correctly. Now, we, you want to go off your root level CMake. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. Usually what people do is they make a build directory. They go into their build directory, and then they say CMake and start the CMake command to set things up. And you want to say that your source, so dash capital S, is backer directory. That's because we're in this build directory. And then you want it to build in this current directory. Well, if you, you want it to build in your current directory, you actually don't need to put anything. So blank is fine. So this command right here will give you the default CMake stuff. And here we go. It's uh, finding the GNU compiler. Cool. That's what we want here. And there are ways with CMake to s specify different compilers and stuff, but we're going with a lot of default. So we're still in the build directory. We should have a make file here. That's what it's going to do on Linux. So let's do another list and see what we got down here at the bottom. We do see we have a make file right there. So we just want to run that. We just run make. It builds. As you can see, it just default built all. It built our nutrition library and it built our tester. Cool. So now if we look in here again, we'll see, uh, well, we have foundation. Let's go into that. Change directory to it. Take a look at, the, at that. 
and there's our live nutrition.a that is a static library and it's ready to go you could you could link it to anything in linux it built successfully so we're basically done but uh, just to be sure here now if we want to walk through the code here we can use gdb now gdb is not installed so we need to install it cool gdb is essentially the debugger uh, for linux and we're going to get that uh, set up here that way we can walk through and Linux and do some debugging and see what's going on okay so to get the debug symbols on Linux I don't know what it's doing by default if you don't specify it might be something in that preset uh, but I couldn't really tell but essentially you need to set it to debug by calling CMake like this dash D CMake build type equals debug and then standard to your source so um, yeah this is from that build directory once again just like before but now it should have built with debug symbols so we should be able to run gdb on it now and see what's going on with that test you can pass in arguments to your uh, executable that you want to gdb with this uh, args basically by doing this and passing in what we wanted i was able to figure out i use the list command to look at the uh, the actual code uh, put a breakpoint somewhere put a breakpoint at 10 uh, it's right here and when I actually ran it, and you press N to uh, get to the next line, I found out that uh, this is still bugged, basically. This is supposed to be food2.calories, food2.salt. So we never actually pushed and did a proper pull. The code's fine. Uh, I just didn't uh, push the code from fixing earlier. There we go. Now we definitely have the stuff. Let's, uh, let's just rebuild. Let's see where we're at. We're in uh, source, test. Let's go back a few directories. Let's go into build. Let's run uh, CMake again. Uh, we don't necessarily need to run CMake. I could probably just run make since, yeah, let's just run make. If you're just changing code in one of the files, typically you don't need to rerun CMake. Um, there's a little more to it than that, but that's kind of a general rule. We are in the build. We've redone the build. We should be able to run ctest. And this time, as expected, it passes. Uh, so now we can confirm that the base test of just uh, eating food with our nutrition app works on both Windows and Linux. But there are times when you need to do specific stuff in your code for Windows, specific stuff for Linux. So we can just uh, we can just do something a little special here. Let's see, do I have... Uh, I'm not using console out anyway. I guess we can do it on the tests here. Okay, let's just do it on our test file. That's fine. So let's say we'll do a little, a little preamble on our test. All right, and we'll just go if def underscore win32. That's Windows. I don't know why they choose it like that or why they do it that way uh underscore 132 but that's what it is and you always need an end if on this so this is a compiler clause this isn't um a logical if in your uh, running code this is a logical if for your compiler only so your compiler will say okay if windows 32 is defined then i do this stuff and that would be you're running on windows so we could go for example see out running on windows um, see out we need uh, IO stream here let's just include that real quick um, and there's an end if here so we could see if it's running on Windows because we'll get that console out now obviously this is a very contrived example I'm just kind of showing that you can do it on different OS's and get different places in your code to run all right so this gets a little messier than I guess you would think um, pretty quickly like for example just just a quick look at stack overflow and we find out that like all right well there's a standard i'm kind of doing it the right way they don't have a mac os in here but yeah whatever uh it's probably it's one of these though but yeah at the end you can put an else error not supported or something so if they're trying to compile on uh something else but here here's the majority of them there's apple underscore underscore apple sometimes they come in like multi-format like there's the linux there's also unix there's also capital Linux. There's also capital Unix. So Win32 underscore Win32. It's a, uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mixed bag. I don't know. I would just pick a standard and, and stick with it, I guess, because there seems to be a lot that basically all are the same thing. Um, but it might vary. So I guess the point here is that you need to like do a little bit of considering for what's maybe the most common or best one used. It sounds like it's basically this. All right, and then we'll put a, a final else here. It says, uh, I don't know, no idea what you're running on, I guess. Not sure what uh, OS, sure. That's fine enough for now. So we can run it right here. Yeah, let's just hit this. And this will run it with no parameters, but we should get a running on Windows, running on Windows. Okay, so if we commit this code, let's go ahead and commit it and then run it on Linux. 
should we, we should get the Linux one. And then that's probably good enough to show you that this actually works. Do a git pull. Got some new stuff there, 12 lines. Sounds good. Um, now, since uh, still the same files, we'll just add some code. All we gotta do is run make again to recompile, run our tester. Uh, let's run our tester by going to it rather than running ctest because ctest won't necessarily show the C out. There it is. And we can just run it from here. Tester, um, on Linux, you gotta do a dot slash say run. And there we go. We got running on Linux from that if def on that one. Here's how you do the same if defs, but on CMake in case you need to make some specific on CMake. Here's someone asking the question. And the basic answer is you just do an if. Win32, do something. If Unix, do something, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a bunch more. You know, there's links here. Um, just Google the question. You'll probably find it. Peace out, guys. Have a good one. Happy coding.